is time. It's time to talk about some butterflies. Butterflies. I started reading a book about a blue monarch. And I, yeah, here it is. This is uh, Susan Binkley. And evidently, she really likes butterflies. And butterflies have been flying through our system for a long time. So come on in here. Let's get some music going. Robert got his windshield fixed. They came to us. Safe light. If you ever have a broken windshield. And, and while you're at it, check your policy to see if, if um, you've got coverage for your windshields. This policy that we had had full windshield coverage. And if it hadn't have been, it would have cost $800 to fix the windshield. So, folks, get on in here. Let's see what song we're going to play. <laughs> Sorry. One more day. Come on in. Come on in. I can hear the thunder rolling And the rain begins to fall I can feel my courage tremble After I have come so far Today my heart is sinking And my world is caving in But there's light on the horizon And the darkness will give in to one more day of hope, one more day of faith. Tomorrow will be brighter if I get through today. Better days are coming further down the road. So for now, I'll just keep clinging. One more day of hope. One more day. One more day. And I know that I will be through this. When I find the power within me, I know this storm will pass. It will only make me stronger. When this victory I've won. And last a little longer If I, I keep, keep holding on To one, one more day, day of hope One more day of faith Tomorrow will be brighter If I get through today Better days are coming further down the road. 
So for now, I'll just keep clinging to one I more day of hope. One more day. everybody come on in miss sage has to have some blood work done tomorrow robert's got to go to his doctor tomorrow but he had his blood work done last week and they got it in and everything looks good same levels so he hates the drive over there and i think he's going to be changing doctors which i'm probably right there with him anyway so y'all Get in here. We got lots to take a, talk about. I'm going to talk about butterflies. Butterflies, butterflies. So I was telling you this morning about a lady that used to be, I think she's, I haven't heard from her in years, and she wasn't in the greatest of health when she was a lot, when she was, I mean, she had my personal phone number. And early on, she told me that, that she suffered from um, disassociation. She was severely abused as a child, locked in the attic, burned with cigarettes. It was horrible, just horrible. Some of the things she told me. And she would send me long, testimonials and she was like the original make something out of nothing she would go to a dumpster and find an old table she'd take it home she'd paint it she'd fix it up and she'd get rid of something old in her house and make room for the new thing that she had she would find things and give them to other people who were homeless and she was just a precious precious woman and her name was Victoria and I never heard from her I, I guess it's been 10 years since I heard from her and I'm assuming that she had passed on I didn't know her last name so I wasn't able to do a search for an obituary or anything and she didn't have any family and but she drew an image of Fly Lady in the very beginning before we ever had the cartoon character. The cartoon character is right behind me right there. And I've got one right here. But she drew an image of Fly Lady. And nobody knew what I looked like. But she told me it had butterfly wings. And she put it on the wall behind her toilet. Or maybe on her toilet seat. I can't remember which. But she put them all over her house. And then we, we started having the Fly Lady logo. And she threw them all away. She threw them all away. And I sent her some of our Fly Lady um, clingies, we called them, because they would stick. They were just plastic and would stick to anything. And she was, she knew she had issues. But she had gotten her house in order. And when she had gotten her house in order, it freed her up to be what she could be. Her abuse was horrible, but she didn't let that get her down. Sometimes she would get triggered and would become somebody else. And I wouldn't hear about it, hear about her for a long time. And then she'd show back up and... She lived in New Jersey. And 
but she loved butterflies. She absolutely loved butterflies. And even though Fly Lady didn't have butterfly wings, Fly Lady had dragonfly wings. And I was sp specific about that. But it would have been okay if she'd had butterfly wings because butterflies, when you watch a butterfly, and I've taken pictures, that picture that I showed you this morning of the, the monarch on, on my blood, butterfly weed, that's my favorite fly, flower is a butterfly weed. It's orange. It's not a butterfly plant, a butterfly bush. It's a butterfly weed. And monarch butterflies lay their eggs on this plant and then they hatch and they become they become larva and caterpillars and then they spin a cocoon and right now we're all at that cocoon stage we are all at we're, we've surrounded ourselves with clutter and that clutter keeps us insulated from whatever's happening in the world or whatever. We don't have to think about it because we got clutter here and clutter there. And it's just, it's around us. Now we want to get out of that cocoon. But if we hire somebody to come in and clean our house for us or get rid of the clutter, whatever it is they have decided to do, if we hire somebody to do it, it's not going to stick. It's just like trying to get the butterfly that's struggling out of the cocoon. When you look at it, you think, oh, I'm helping this butterfly. I'm going to get it out. But see, the struggle is part of the process. The struggle is part of the process. The struggle helps us to grow. It helps us to to learn things. You know, I would have never been able to teach you how to fly had I not struggled with clutter and chaos. I would have never been able to do that. So the struggle pumps blood into parts of our brain. We retrain our brains. We wrote body clutter. That's all about retraining the space between these two ears and developing new root, new habits, stringing them into routines and changing our attitudes about so many things that we're just oblivious to. We can do this. If I did it, anybody can. But that cat that caterpillar going through this metamorphosis, That you got to, you know how it takes you nine months to give birth? You have a baby, you give birth, and it takes nine months to develop this baby in your womb. It took me nine months to get rid of the stinking thinking, the, the sadness the unforgiveness. It was all one thing after another that I uncovered. And, and we wrote about this in, in Body Clutter. And we might go through Body Clutter next, next month. So the, the sadness, the unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is a pill that you take to kill somebody else, but it doesn't. Unforgiveness is the opposite of love, just like fear is the opposite of love. When we don't forgive somebody, we hold ourselves stuck in that cocoon. We can't open our wings and fly because we're too busy dwelling on what this person did to us. Victoria didn't dwell on what her mother did to her. Victoria didn't dwell on that. 
She suffered from it, but she didn't dwell on it. She taught me a lot about forgiveness and about stretching your wings as you're coming out of the cocoon. That's the sad part about having an online ministry. You don't know everybody. Now, I know many of my fly babies. I've met many of them. I've gone to their homes. One, one of my first people to help me with Fly Lady was Jean. And I was at the bookstore getting Robert some crossword puzzle books at Christmas one year and she heard my voice and I don't know how she knew my voice or maybe she looked over the the book shelf at me and she said Marla is that you I didn't know her and I said yeah and she says I'm one of your fly babies and this was early on this was early on for like the first nine months of Fly Lady. And she said, um, you know, I do distribution for a doctor here in town who's got a book and I ship those books out for him if you ever need anything like that. And we were sending, shipping calendars. This was in 2001. We were shipping calendars out of our dining room. And she says, you've helped me to get organized. Now, she has since moved to Utah. Her children are grown. She had three young boys. But she and I, she knew me. I didn't know her in my own hometown. But we got to visit her out west one time. And she worked with us. Justin worked with her helping to supply her with products and different things to handle our shipping. I still did the downloads from PayPal at the time. And we, we knew we could make a difference in people's lives. We didn't set out to have a ministry. In fact, I, I told people it wasn't a ministry. I just wanted to help people. Well, that is a ministry. That was part of... You know, touching people's lives. You do what you're called to do. I was the lady that sent me this book. We were in high school together. And we graduated the same year. She was the valedictorian of our class. She was a superintendent of a school system in Obine County, Tennessee. She went to work at the University of Tennessee at Martin. She was in an abusive marriage. She was raised by her father. Her mother was sick. We've all been raised by the people we were supposed to be raised by. Everything I ever did before Fly Lady started prepared me to be Fly Lady. Everything. So we were talking about, she sent me this wonderful thing about 41 today. Let's see if I can find it. Because it's powerful. Where is... Uh, Here we go. Here we go. This is, I don't know who wrote this. Credit Mackenzie Miller. The Bob in the Bible, it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. Day 41 came, the rain stopped. Moses committed murder, hid in the desert for 40 years. Year 41 came and God called him to rescue Israel. 
Moses went up to the mountain for 40 days. And on, four, on the 41st day, he received the Ten Commandments. Israelites wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. Year 41, they walked into the promised land. Goliath taunted Israel for 40 days. Day 41, David slew him. Jonah preached a message of repentance to Nineveh for 40 days. On day 41, God stopped his plan, stopped his plan to destroy them. You know, in 40 days, Nineveh was going to be destroyed. Even though Jonah fled from his mission, Jonah fled from his mission and was thrown off a ship when he admitted to him that's why the storms were there. He fled from his mission and was swallowed up by the big fish. Jesus fasted and was tempted for 40 days in the desert. Day 41, the devil fled. After his resurrection, Jesus appeared to his disciples for 40 days. On day 41, he ascended into heaven. All of this to say, don't quit. The rain will stop. The giant will fall. You will enter your promised land. Don't give up at 40. 41 is coming. How beautiful is that? I don't know how long it takes for a butterfly to come out of its cocoon. I've, I've never witnessed that. I've never tried to watch that. I know when mother was teaching, she had a moth and they put it in a jar. It, was, it wasn't a moth. It was a caterpillar in, and it spun a web and I could probably look up the the caterpillar stuff online and find out how long that caterpillar is in the cocoon. But that's beside the point. It took me nine months to give birth to a new me. It was nine months of practicing a new habit each month, stringing them into simple routines. Just three-step routines. My life changed. I got rid of the clutter, that cocoon that was holding me back. We couldn't have people over. It would take us a week to get ready for book group to come to our house. And that was Robert and I working all the time. You know, Robert and I got married in 1996 and I had a house full of clutter. He had a house full of clutter. We put it together and then we went to estate auctions and bought more. You couldn't walk in our house. You didn't dare get up in the middle of the night. For fear of tripping over something. I've only tripped over one thing in the middle of the night, and that was a big dog named Chief. And he broke my fall. He broke my fall. And he was almost, oh, he was probably 175 pounds. He was huge. He was the biggest dog they ever had to put down. But he was our chief. He looked like a big old bear. But when people would get up in the middle of the night, he would try to guard them. <clears throat> and he laid down in my path. And he was all black, practically. All black. And I walked out of my bathroom into our bedroom and... There he was. I didn't see him. So it took me nine months to develop this new me. And I didn't do it fast. It was slow and steady. One more day of hope. I didn't even have those songs. But it was slow and steady. So y'all, don't be fearful. Don't push too hard and try to get somebody to pull you out of that those cocoons.
because we've got to go through the process. That's when it sticks. That is when it stays with you. Fly Lady started in December of 1999, just before Y2K. And then that whole next year, we grew by 10,000 people. That doesn't seem like a whole lot, but here I was, this woman from Brevard, North Carolina, everything I've done, everything that's ever happened in my life, I am thankful for because it taught me, it taught me everything I needed to know to be your fly lady. I didn't set out with some great big business plan. This, this lady that wrote this book, she said she sat down when she decided what it was she was supposed to be doing. She ran a coffee shop. She ran a coffee shop in a little town in Grundy County, Tennessee. I think it's where the uh, University of Swanee is. It's real close to Patty. Ran this little little coffee shop in the middle of this college town. And she, she ran into women that were abused, that were addicted. We had, as Patty said, we had no clue, but we were willing. As Robert told me on our very first date, we had to put our sails up to be able to go where God wanted to take us. God took me to Brevard, North Carolina. I didn't know why. I didn't know how. So folks, Patty, I put this book on our Audible account if you want to read it. God is good. He prepares us. If he has called us to do something, he's going to make sure we have the tools to do it with. And I know you're afraid. We're all, we've all had fear, but I have no fear. I it was just I had no fear, no fear. I knew it was just one step right after the other. And that's 24 years ago, y'all. And it's still that way every single day. You get up and you put your, put your shoes on, you put your clothes on, not in that order. <laughs> the shoes are the last thing to go on. You fix your hair, your face. You know, I didn't do video back then. I didn't start doing video till till um, probably around COVID. But I took care of things. And I had people there to help me. My sister, number one. My son, number one. You know, when, when Fly Lady started, Justin was packing books in my garage at a at a folding card table. Packing books, sleeving books in plastic and putting them back in the case. And we were getting orders for 1,500 books at a time. And he would have to take them. We didn't, we didn't have distribution center. That's why we started a distribution center. But he would take them to the to the. FedEx place, or I don't know what it was, UPS, I don't remember, but they would get shipped to Kentucky, and he would wrap a pallet in some shrink wrap stuff and send them on, and the book did well. Anyway, y'all, to God be the glory. Everything we've been through has prepared us for who we are today. Yeah, who we are today. 
God, if God calls you to something, he's going to fix it where you're going to know what you need to, what you need to know. The funds are going to be there. Everything's going to be there. You can't be fearful. You say, okay, God, I'm going to Nineveh. This fish spit him out on the beach and he went to Nineveh. I think it, he had to walk. It was like a, a two day journey or something. I don't know. For, don't quote me on that. But he went to Nineveh and he preached for 40 days. Well, fly lady came from, I used to teach people how to fly fish. That's how I got to North Carolina. And then one of my members came up with the acronym for fly. Finally loving yourself. How simple is that? I got it because I was a fly fishing instructor. My grandson can tie flies. He fly fishes. Because I passed it down to him. And this weekend he spent time. He made a new friend this weekend. And they went fishing together. So y'all are giving your testimonials here in the chat. People don't see the chat. Your testimonials are how I get paid. Please don't keep them to yourself. Send me your testimonials to flylady at flylady.net with testimonial in the subject line. Send them to me. That helps to change these stupid algorithms that keep our messages from getting in people's inboxes. Right now, we've been stuck all afternoon. God gets all the glory, y'all. He does it all. If he's called you to do something, he's going to give you the means to do it with. One step at a time. <laughs> Makes me think of the song, one, one Step at a Time, Sweet Jesus. It's all I'm asking from you. Jesus is the key, y'all. We are soaked in the blood of Jesus. We're baptized in him. When we take communion, we take communion of his body and his blood. Never forget that. Call on the blood. Well, y'all, be good, kind, and sweet. Thank you, Lord. For Jack's healing, I know you are going to change his whole perspective on what's been going on. He is going to glorify you with his healing, with the miraculous change that is going to be in him to tell his story. Lord, we love you. We lift you up. Protect us, Lord, from the evil that is out there trying to kill, steal, and destroy. Trying to take our babies. We love you, Lord. Thank you for the Lord's prayer. Today was so wonderful to start my day with several times saying that Lord's prayer. Thank you, Lord. All glory goes to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Y'all heard a wonderful testimony last night. It was just a little short that was on YouTube, I guess, or maybe it was on Twitter. I don't know. Or X. And... You remember the shooting in Nashville, Tennessee, at the school. 
Well, this kindergarten class was out on the playground when this person came to shoot up the school. And the kids went home that afternoon telling their parents of this huge dome that came over their playground and the angels that were on the dome. These are five-year-olds telling their parents about the angels. Well, the person with the guns didn't see the kids on the playground because they had been protected by this dome that kept them from being seen. They had, that person had to break in the school, shoot up a door to get inside. Oh my. The angels were there. I was listening to Pastor Kent Christmas. They've been having a fresh fire revival this weekend. Several great speakers. Some of them I never heard before. Jensen Franklin. Oh, he was he was really good. But there were some great speakers. And at the end, this lady came up and she wanted healing. And so there was a bunch of people wanting healing. And this one lady couldn't hear out of one ear. She couldn't hear. And before the service was over, she could hear. She could hear. I've been telling Robert that his his busted eardrum is going to be healed in the name of Jesus. I love it. It's going to happen. I know it's going to happen. I know it's going to happen. You just have to know that butterfly is going to come out of that cocoon. And the struggle that it has to get out of that cocoon is going to solidify the blood into that cocoon, into that butterfly's wings. And that is going to give it the strength that it needs to be able to fly. Are you going to be like that butterfly? Anyway, I love you all. I told you we'd talk about food a little bit. I cleaned out my freezer the other day and found five hamburger patties that needed to be cooked. You know, they're getting a little tinged around the edge from freezer burn. And I thought, well, if they don't taste good, I'll just feed them to the dog. Well, uh, not Sage, it was uh, Julie from the marathon on Saturday. She was caramelizing some onions, and it it got me thinking that would be really good with those hamburger steaks. They were just little hamburger patties, so I we each got two of them and one left over, and I had it for lunch yesterday. And I made this wonderful caramelized onion gravy to go over these hamburger patties. I thought I turned the oven on, and the oven didn't turn on. Because I set the timer instead of the oven. And Robert got to use our new microwave to cook our our baked potatoes. And we had a salad with some greens that I had never heard of. Sweet pea greens. Oh, it's pretty good. And we just had a lovely dinner that cost us nothing. We had leftover potatoes, leftover beef patties that needed to be cooked, and they took up room in the freezer and a salad. So y'all, get your dinner started right now so you don't have to slave in the kitchen. What is Irish butter? Uh, What is that stuff called? I buy it 20 pounds at a time and it gets shipped to me. What is the butter called, y'all? Something gold. Carrie's gold. Carrie's gold. Mm. It's the best butter ever. It is the best butter ever. And I get it 
online on Amazon, 20 pounds at a time. Yep. I still have plenty. I get it about twice a year. Anyway, folks, I love you all. Be good, kind, and sweet. Be good to yourself. Kind to others. And let that joy and sweetness tell the world who you are. And, you know, a lot of times we add a word to our vocabulary in, at the first of the year. Here it is, the middle of April. And I still hadn't figured out my word for this year, but I figured a word to eliminate from my vocabulary. So instead of adding a word, I'm going to take away a word. I'm going to quit asking why. Most of the time, it's God we ask why. And when I heard somebody, and I gave a testimony, sitting in a jail cell and just rocking and asking God, why, why, why have, have I been arrested? I haven't done anything wrong. And she heard God say, Paul and Silas didn't ask me why. Oh my, Paul and Silas didn't ask me why. So folks, question yourself. Don't question God. To God be the glory. We got 111 people in here now. I love you all. I'll see you later. I've talked longer than this was this was a good tea time.